Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatore. So this is going to be a genuinely quite brief video, I promise you. This is a video for the antique sword aficionados out there, so 19th century military swords. As you know on this channel I talk a lot about them, although I haven't been doing much recently. But I have just acquired uh, yesterday a uh, very, very interesting, at least very interesting to me, sword, and I thought I'd, I'd whip it out for you and give, give you a little bit of a look of it. Um, but I'm going to set the scene before I go into that. and just talk about the size um, for a second um, because I want to kind of put it into context, that's right, I want to put it into size context in this um, scenario. So here is a moderately sized, uh, what was known as a medium uh, medium cavalry, so it's a 34 and a half inch blade um, light cavalry officer's sword. Okay, this one's got a patent help, but um, you know, no particular importance there. So that's the kind of size of this sword. If we compare that now to the 1821 uh, pattern light cavalry trooper's sword, not officer's, so trooper's sword. And you'll notice that the uh, 1821 trooper's sword is quite big. So let's put down this later Victorian um, officer's sword for a minute. So this model of sword came in in 1821, so it's Georgian actually, uh, but was still being used um, at the charge of the light brigade famously. So this was the model of sword that was replaced in 1853 by the 1853 pattern uh, cavalry sword for all cavalry, light and heavy. And um, this size of blade, however, remained in service until the 1880s, and they actually reduced the size of blades somewhat in the 1880s. So this is quite a big blade. It's 35 and a half inches long. You can do the conversion. I'm not sure what that is in centimeters, but they're uh, usually one and a quarter inch wide at the base, and they used imperial measurements, so that's what I'm using here. One and a quarter inch wide by 35 and a half inches long. So it's a fairly big beefy blade and in fact by the 1880s they decided that most um, cavalrymen couldn't really handle a sword of that size. Bear in mind that I'm six foot, just over, I'm nearly six foot one, so I would be very big by Victorian standards. In fact John Musgrave Waite I know was six foot and was regarded as very large. So the average um, kind of cavalryman of the of the Victorian era would have been significantly smaller than me. This size is fine for me, but they were smaller than me. Um, but 35 and a half inches is a fairly big beefy blade, nevertheless. Okay, so this is a fairly large sword for the period. Now, this sword that I've just acquired um, is bigger, uh, quite a bit bigger in fact. So this is 35 and a half inches long. This one is 39 inches long. It's massive, okay? So this is a really big sword. And by any standards, for certainly for a saber, for a military saber, 39 inches is huge, okay? That's pretty much the biggest that the um, horse guards, so like the lifeguards, for example, their swords, um, that's pretty much the biggest that they ever got. There's a couple of examples of 40 inch blades and possibly even 41 inches, but generally speaking, they varied from 37 to 41. And that's the horse guards. And that they were specifically using, they were the biggest guys using the biggest swords on the biggest horses. So by any other standard, this uh, 35 and a half inch blade is pretty big by general European standards, but a 39 inch blade is just big, massive, okay? And, um, you know, if, for example, I compare it to the French 1822 behind me, this is a fairly big blade, it's 36 inches. The French light cavalry used 36 inch blades, and yes, cuirass cuirassier, cuirassier swords did, uh, did reach up to this size, but they were thrusting swords, very different thing. So this is 36 inches, this is 39 inches. In incidentally, I happen to know 39 inches is about 99 centimeters. Um, so it is a big, it is a big, big sword. Now let's just say a couple of other interesting things about this sword. You'll notice that it is more curved than most British swords are in this period. You'll also notice it has a bowl guard on it that is of the 1821 heavy cavalry type. But you might also notice the, uh, the sharp-eyed or the more knowledgeable on this subject might have noticed that it has a very determined and aggressive cant to the uh, tang. Uh, why is this? Well, obviously, whoever got this made, um, and, I, and I don't know, and I don't know who the maker was, there's no maker's name on it, whoever, uh, whoever got this made obviously had a very specific thing in mind 
if someone asks me why might you do that with a sword, well bear in mind that most sabres have um, some degree of, in fact these, these don't, okay, so that's pretty much in st straight line between the grip and the bottom of the blade, um, this is in a straight line with the bottom of the blade, and this is in a straight line with the bottom of the blade, but if you look at something like certain types of 1796 like cavalry sabre for example, they often do have a forward cant. And what that gives you are two things. Number one, it means that by bringing, in relation to the angle of the hand, by bringing the blade forward, it actually gives you more of a chopping motion rather than a slicing motion. Okay, so if I just pick up the French um, 1822 for a second, um, essentially, instead of hitting the target at that angle, you're hitting it at that angle. Okay, so it makes it more of an aggressive chopper, almost axe-like, a bit like a cookery. Okay, in fact, very similar to a cookery in some ways. So it, it means that when you hit something with this sword, instead of slicing across it like you would with a, with a talwar, for example, you're actually hitting, bam, with it there, almost like I say, axe-like, or even perhaps um, a bit like a, a kopesh or something like that, or, um, uh, or, or an Egyptian sword. So it has... A certain, it has more of an aggressive chopping action rather than a slicing action. And the other thing that it achieves, of course, is it helps bring the point online more if you want to thrust, which if you have a very curved blade, that could potentially be useful if you're on horseback and you want the ability to be able to thrust as well. By having that very canted grip, almost pistol grip, it enables you to get the point online more easily. And actually, despite the aggressive curve of this blade, I can actually still get the point online fairly easily. Um, and the last thing to say about this sword, it is the grip construction. If we just look at that for a second. So you'll notice that it is constructed exactly like an 1853 pattern cavalry sword. So it's the full width of Reeves Tang. And I actually believe that this sword is almost certainly made by Charles Reeves. Um, the grip scales, I believe on this example, are um, composition or horn rather than leather as on the 1853 pattern. Okay, so this is a private purchase, I believe, um, not a government produced weapon. Um, and as we've mentioned the angle, but there is one other thing. If you look at the length of that grip um, and compare it with, I don't have an 1853 to hand at the moment, but if you can compare it with the 1821, you'll notice it's short. Now, this brings in several features here. So, first of all, the use of a bowl guard, number one, the accentuated curve of the blade, number two, and the shorter grip than usual, number three, indicates to me that this is almost certainly made as a special order, either for a trooper or as a private purchase officer's weapon, perhaps, uh, for someone in an Indian cavalry regiment. And in fact, the, for me, the clinching thing is the short grip. The standard 1853 grip is about that long, is a couple of centimeters longer, and shorter grips are almost always associated with Indian cavalry. Um, and so my belief is that this sword has probably an association with something like the Bengal Lancers or something like that. So a very, very interesting sword. I hope you found that interesting. Just to reiterate, 39 inch blade is just, I, I almost want to get a sparring version of this made. I want to get a, a practice saber made with a 39 inch blade on it, because quite frankly, that's getting into rapier uh, realm. And one of the big disadvantages you have when you're using a saber against a rapier is the reach. Uh, but when your saber is almost as long as a rapier, hmm, that changes things slightly. It is unwieldy. How does it feel? It, it's not super heavy, actually. It's quite nicely balanced for its, for its type. It's got a lot of distal taper. But that is a lot of blade, especially with such a short hilt. Uh, you, you don't have a lot of space to get the thumb up, um, so most of the time you'd be using a hammer fist grip. But the reach you've got with it is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, phenomenal. And obviously used from horseback, that extra reach could be really, really nice. Um, especially if someone's coming at you with determined to take your head off with a tolwa, then the ability to give point with 39 inches of blade from a very, very long way away is an advantage, much like with a rapier. Anyway, I hope that's been interesting. I'll see you again soon on the channel. Um, more videos coming up very soon. In fact, I've filmed a whole bunch more videos, so they're loaded and ready to go. Um, so I'll see you really soon. Uh, extra videos on Patreon. 
uh, as always three three videos per month on there and um, please give me a subscribe and a like and i'll see you soon cheers folks thanks for watching we've got extra videos on patreon please give our facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already cheers folks